I loved the prairie so much as a child. It was always amazing to me to find out others didn't feel the same way. It seemed that some folks couldn't bear the flatness. Some couldn't handle the harshness of the weather. Jake once told me a story about a man over in Dudney who said too much space made him feel like he could suffocate to death. And I don't want to see hide nor hair of you or that snake horn of yours ever again. Stay away from Tiger Lily, you hear? I protest this, this brutish treatment. Whatever the reason was, we didn't get many visitors in Crocus. And the ones that did pass through tended to keep their visits short. What should we do? Why should we do something? Well, we can't just leave him lying here on the tracks. Why not? Because. That's not much of a reason. I appreciate a philosophical debate as much as the next man, but I fear this will go on all day if I don't intervene. Ah, I am Professor Claudius T. Weinsinger, and I have made the free and clear-headed decision to place myself upon these tracks and remain here until a train comes along and snuffs out my miserable, unworthy life. Gee, uh, I don't think you'll be able to do that. Why not? Because there won't be a train coming through here at least a week, maybe two. <clears throat> that uh, could put a damper on my plan. I think you should get up off these tracks anyway, just in case. Oh, I'll truly uh, unworthy of me. Ah. I apologize to both of you considerate young men. I should never have involved you in my personal despair. Oh, if I could only find the strength to carry my few possessions, I could be well on my way. I fear lack of food has made me too weak to continue. Haven't you had anything to eat? I'm sure I have. I just can't remember when. Well, we're not far from the sanitary cafe. Oh, that sounds lovely, my boy, but I'm ashamed to admit I'm sorely lacking in funds. Don't worry, we can lend you some money. How much you got? Thirty-two cents. 
I got nothing. 32 cents will be just fine. In fact, I'll make it imminently worth your while. Wine singers, lightning penetration oil, and tune-up tonic. A bargain at the price. What's it for? Anything you got. Shall we? for you, Albert. Ten dollars! Ten dollars! Corny man! We can get that horse back in my corral! I wouldn't go near that horse for a hundred. He's even meaner than you are. <laughs> go! <laughs> I'll get you, you miserable nag! This time you don't move for sure! Ah, oh, that's the last you'll see of him, Albert. Beating you at your own game. <laughs> Finally got a red mark in the old ledger book, huh? Have you done? I'm shaving off my beard, just like you always want it. Dad, the last time I asked you to shave your beard off, I was 10 years old. Well, I finally got around to it. What do you think? Spiffy enough to meet your new boyfriend? Is that what this is about? Oh, I wouldn't want to meet Mr. Hoity Toity College Professor from the East, uh, looking like, what did you used to say? The business end of a porcupine that was about to... You know, you're unbelievable. You haven't even met Greg yet, and you've already decided that you're not going to like him. Well, I don't need to meet him. College professor from out east, I know the type. He'll come out here and start telling us how to grow wheat. He is not like that. And besides, he's studying folklore, not farming. Oh, folklore! Oh, even better. You know, if you're going to do something as stupid as to cut off your beard to spite your face, you might as well do it properly. Now go get Rapey to clean up that mess. Go! All right, I'll go. But not because you told me to. I'm going because it's a good idea. <laughs> don't know why you thought you could do this on your own, Gator. I really don't know at uh, all. Just give me a shave, repeat, I, not a lecture. I have a responsibility to my profession. A responsibility. It would be unethical for me not to warn you of the dangers involved when an amateur takes it upon himself. All I'm asking for is a shave. A simple, ordinary shave. But can I get what I want? No, not on your life. All I get is yapping and blabbing and... The future son-in-law? What is that supposed to mean? Uh, easy. <laughs> Gate, Gate, uh, to think of your blood pressure. There's nothing wrong with my blood pressure. Yeah, well, there's going to be, if you keep this up, there's certainly going to be. All I'm saying, Gate, is that you're more ornery than usual today. Say, repeat, isn't that boyfriend of Molly's coming into town today? What if he is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about my little girl, Jake. It's up to me to protect her, ain't it? Hold it here. This is Molly we're talking about, isn't it? The same Molly that shot that rabid dog right between the eyes when it went after little Susie Campbell. And the one who gave every boy in the Crocus school at least one black eye before she was any bigger than Ben. And the only person in this town that's ever beat Albert Ricky out of a business opportunity. Yeah, except for the fellow that sold him Balthazar, of course. <laughs> the guy's a college professor, for Pete's sake. That's your problem? You don't like him because he's educated? Well, that don't make him honest. 
Some guy from the East with a bunch of letters behind his name who's probably never lifted anything heavier than a dictionary in his entire life. I mean, the guy don't even teach Jake. He's writing a book, she says, on fairy tales. I mean, ah. I mean, is that any way for a man to make a living? I mean, it ain't hard to see how an innocent prairie girl with her own store and a nice little nest egg could look like a ticket to Easy Street. Oh. Well, now, I think Molly shows pretty sound judgment. Pretty sound judgment, Gator. Don't you think you ought to at least meet this young fella before you decide he's up to no good? All I'm saying is I'm going to be watching him, watching him like a hawk. He tries any funny business with my little girl, and he's going to be about as safe as a 20-pound turkey the night before Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, hopefully it won't come to that, Gate. Now, it's just a visit. He might not even stay that long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got that right. I got Molly to set him up with a cot out in the storeroom. You know how cold it is out there. I give him two nights of freezing his tail off, and he'll be headed right back where he came from. Well, I, I think he'll be here a little longer than that, a, a little a longer. Why is that? That, I, I, she, first, Whatever it is you're trying to say or repeat, you better spit it out. Molly rented him uh, my upstairs room, uh, paid for two months' uh, rent in advance. This is it? This can't be it. Crocus, right over there. Are you lost? Alicia. Pardon? Uh, lost. Uh, I'm not sure. Are you Greg? Molly's Greg? You mean this really is Crocus? <laughs> Get in. Demi goddess, Cynthia and I believe. Oh. <laughs> she came to the rescue of travelers in distress. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, more likely, I'm gonna have to rescue those eggs. You know what that basket? <laughs> Go inside. 
His name is Gregory Oakes. He's from Halifax. He is here doing research for a book on folklore, and Molly met him when she spent her one semester doing a business course at the University of Manitoba. And as you can all plainly see, they are definitely a couple. Molly! <clears throat> Sir, allow me to introduce myself. I I'm great. I'd say the way she was kissing you when I walked in tells me exactly who you are. Would you be any ruder? I could try. Yes, well... I've truly been looking forward to meeting you. Molly has told me so much I'll about you. I'll just bet she has. And, of course, I'm just thrilled to see the store. It has such a timeless quality, redolent of a rural sensibility, yet with overtones of the new entrepreneurial spirit that's sweeping. You picked yourself a winner here, girl. Using simple words, you know, that even a dumb farmer like me can understand. Let's just skip the fancy introductions and you tell me what your plans for my daughter are. Dad, that's enough. You think so? I think it's just the beginning. Greg, I think you should take a walk. I think he should stay right here and answer my question. What a simple hello, nice to meet you, be so difficult for you. Couldn't you wait five minutes before you give him the third degree? What's the matter, little girl? Are you afraid your old dad might be right about your professor here? Sir, I can assure you. Stay, stay out, out of this! this. It was nice to see you again. Bye-bye. Greg, everything all right? That depends. Mm. Gate and Molly going at it again? You could say that. <laughs> I didn't know whether to intervene or duck. And then good sense took over and I opted for self-preservation. Wise choice. I thought I'd take a tour around the town, but it hardly seems necessary. Is this it? Yes, it is. I think it's perfect. <laughs> Hardly. But it does have its moments. Obviously. So how long are you staying? I don't know. How long do you think it'll be before Molly's father runs me out of town? Will he have reason to? Of course not. Well, do you happen to know the story of King Manicles? I'm afraid not. He had an incredibly beautiful daughter who had ten princes vying for her hand. Manicles promised that the first one to defeat him in a wrestling match would win her. What happened? Oh, he broke five necks, gouged out four pairs of eyes, and removed one spleen with his bare teeth. <laughs> Gate's not that bad, really. You'll be fine. How can you be so sure? Well, you may be the first person he's ever met who can tell a bigger tale than he can. That's a compliment, isn't it? Molly! Is everything all right? Of course. Yeah. Don't worry about Molly. Gate's the one who's probably off licking his wounds. Greg, I'm so sorry. This is hardly the welcome I had planned for you. Seeing you is all the welcome I need. As soon as they led me into the king's chambers, I knew he was the unwitting victim of the worst kind of trickery. Why, they had the poor man all trussed up like some kind of prisoner. Over here. There's a fresh pot of coffee, Molly. Help yourself. Great, thanks. You see, um, it was clear to me that the king was suffering greatly. He had a condition so unusual, so extremely rare that, um, you wouldn't happen to have any more of this delectable soup now, would you? Uh, of course I do. Excellent. And uh, some nice coarse bread to soak it up with. And cheese. Perhaps some Ontario cheddar. Good. Uh, where was I? Oh, you were telling us about the sick king of Bologna. Ah, yes, of course I was. So Henry's a really good friend. He helped me finance that television set I wrote you about. 
I mean, admittedly not the best investment ever, but I think eventually once the signals are strong enough. And it was then that I knew precisely what the king was suffering from. Greg. Shh. What? What was it? Well, no one else had recognized the symptoms. Swelling knees, eyelash loss, an aversion to codfish. But I had seen a case similar to this when I was crossing the Sahara with this Bedouin prince. Oh. <laughs> Uh, what a fine this is fantastic. place fantastic. Exactly what I came out here for. My compliments to the chef. I thought you Thank came you. here to be with me. Of course I did. You know what I'm talking about. This is my work, my passion. Collecting tall tales from a man like this, it's more than I hoped for. So he's perfect. Your really, majesty. Greg? Can't you see In what he's doing? Opinion, the royal position he's the taking advantage of those two little boys. You know, I should probably go right over there and just stop. Shh, shh, me. The king was suffering from a severe case of a frightening condition known as hypermonoglitterosia. Huh? The king of Bologna was allergic to money. Wow. wow. Perfect. You know, if I were you, Albert, I'd say good riddance to bad horse flesh. I would. I'd say good riddance to bad horse flesh. That's easy for you to say, repeat. Actually, uh, nothing's uh, easy for me to say once, once. What I mean is you didn't pay over a hundred dollars for a horse that is worth less than the hair you are sweeping onto my shoes. Uh, you're right on target there, Albert. I, I would certainly never do uh, anything like that. The thing is, I don't lose money, repeat. In fact, I, I can't even tolerate the thought of it. It's you know, just the way I am. It's, it's kind of a flaw, gift, that has enabled me to uh, be as successful as I have. Yeah, but in the case of Balthazar, it seems to me, it, it does seem to me that you have lost money. <laughs> Never say that. Never, never, never. Sorry, Albert. Sorry. In the case of Balthazar, I have merely made an investment that has not yet made a return, but it will repeat. It will. You, uh, really think so? Oh, I know so. Uh, then if I were you, I'd hightail it up the street. I think your investment's making that return right now. Ah! Come back here, you miserable nag! Let's move back for you, hear me? Let's move back for Ah, this truly is an idyllic place. I wonder if you both realize how fortunate you are to be living here. Cokes is all right. Oh, do I detect a bit of wonderlust? My uncle's been all around the world. And you want to follow in his footsteps, do you? Of course. I'm going to walk the Great Wall of China. <laughs> and how about you, Benjamin? What are your plans for the future? I'm going to stay right here in Crocus and be a farmer, just like my dad. He must be very proud of you. He died in the war. Oh, I see. Um, I'm sorry to hear about that. Um... It's OK. Well, um, as splendid as this interlude has been, my boys, it is time for me to move on. Me too. I got to get home. You coming? No. I think I'll stay here and catch a ride with Jake. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what are you going to do now, Professor? Oh, oh. I, I, I really can't say. I fear I'm much too weary to carry on. Oh. You're not gonna lie down on those railroad tracks again, are you? Oh, no, my boy. The kindness that you and young Lazarus have shown me has encouraged me to continue to cling to this mortal coil. What? I'm not gonna do myself in. I'll just attempt to find some shelter for the night. Perhaps some kindly shopkeeper will allow me to huddle in his doorway. <sighs> It's not such a good idea. You know, it gets pretty cold outside at night. Yes. Yes, it does. Ooh. 
What to do? What to do? Ooh. I know. You do? Yeah, but there's just one thing. Do you mind being kind of sneaky? Not at all, my boy. Not at all. I'll get the chicken feed, Jake. I'll get them. Uh, uh, let me take that. Are you all right? Oh, yeah, sure, Jake. Why wouldn't I be all right? I don't know, but you just seem... Really excited about this new chicken feed. Sure hope they like it. Let's go see. Hold on. Just You're going to rip that bag wide open. Now, let's stop with the nonsense, all right? You got work to do. Muck out those stalls. Uh, okay, Jake. I'll be right there. All right. What a, a, a lovely place, a veritable oasis. Okay, you're gonna do what I say, right? Oh, of course I am. I would never jeopardize you. Okay, um, you can stay in that shack, and um, I'll try to sneak you some food later. Just don't let anyone see you. You, you have, you have my word. Hi, boys. Oh, hi, Mom. Ben. The lady of the house, I presume. Uh, Professor Claudius T. Weinsinger, at your service. No. Don't get up. Ben. Ben Osborne. Oh, what's the matter, Ma? Oh, I think you know. What is going on, kid? I, just tell him. I would love to hear you explain why I come home and I find a strange man in my bathtub. What? Jake! It's all right, Jake. He's not dangerous. Anyone who sets foot in that house without your say-so is going to get what he deserves. Just hold on. No, you don't. Don't hurt him, Jake. Professor Weinson. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to forgive me for not recognizing you right off, uh, Jake, but I misplaced my spectacles um, yeah, about three years ago. <laughs> I still can't believe you two know each other. The last time the professor and I saw each other was back in 32, wasn't it? I believe so, it, yeah, 32, yeah. Hmm. To a wild rose I was married. 
upon the prairie wide. We lived and laughed together until she up and died. Where the tiger lily blows, I buried her last night. Where the purple crocus grows, my own dear heart's delight. <laughs> Jake! Oh. <laughs> oh, my dear, dear boy, how very good it is to see you again. How truly unexpected. Well, it's been a long time. It's a lot of water under the bridge. Oh. You know, the professor here was the most successful medicine man ever to ply his trade between Medicine Hat and Portage La Prairie. And the last. There's no one else. I'm the last of my kind. Veritable <laughs> dinosaur. <laughs> you know, Jake here used to be my front man. He'd attract customers for me by singing and playing the man. Dolin. Singing? You did? Yeah. Professor Weinsinger, although we've uh, met under these rather unusual circumstances, I hope you'll stay for dinner. Well, how very gracious of you, my dear. I would be delighted. Oh, Jake, could you help me get that large bowl off the pantry shelf? Sure. <laughs> Jake Trumper, I can't believe you. We would. You of all people fronting for a medicine man? I can't imagine you standing there selling those useless little bottles of colored water and grain alcohol. He used herbs, not alcohol, and there were plenty of folks that said it did him a world of good. Oh, all right. Well, just come across as a straight arrow all the time. Oh. Here, it's for the salad. You can serve. Mm. Ah. If you like, my dear, I could tell your fortune as a token of appreciation for such a wonderful meal. No, no thank you. I'm afraid I don't believe in that sort of thing. Yeah. But there is something that I would like. Tell me how you met Jake. Well, it was over a game of cards, actually. Jake was young then and an easy mark for a very skilled card shark. Oh, are you talking about yourself? No, no, I'm no gambler. I prefer the sure thing. The man I'm talking about was a master of the art of cheating and someone with connections in very powerful places. He pulled a knife when Jake accused him of stacking the deck. What happened? Well, knife or no knife, that man was no match for Jake. But with his connections, well, Jake would end up in trouble with the law through no fault of his own. Ben Osborne, you get back upstairs this instant. <laughs> Regardless of what you may think, my dear, I do not like to see a man get cheated. I intervened. I stood between them before Jake did something he might regret for the rest of his life. And that's when you two teamed up? Exactly. I paid off Jake's gambling debt, and he worked it off by attracting customers for me. <laughs> and as soon as that debt was paid, he got as far away from me and my business as he could. <laughs> Your hired hand is a very honorable man. I know that. Well, 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 now. What have we here, huh? That's Balthazar, crankiest, unfriendliest animal east of the Rockies. Now, you'd best stay away from him. Is he yours? Not on your life. Then what's he doing here? Every now and again, he runs away from his owner just to show him who's boss. Well, he certainly looks gentle enough. Has he been mistreated? I wouldn't say that. Ignored, mostly. I think he misses working and being useful. Careful now, he's just trying to lure you in. You're wrong about this horse, Jake. I can sense it. Now, you didn't get his reputation for nothing, and there's plenty of folks around here with scars to prove it. <laughs> Balthazar. What a noble beast. What a fine gentleman you are. 
Now, you don't want to spend the rest of the night out here in the cold, do you? No, no, no. Not a smart fella like you. <laughs> well, you know, youngster, that's for sure. And I can see you got more than your fair share of battle scars. Well, so do I, my old friend. So do I. Now, how about I show you a place you can bed down for the night? Somewhere where it's nice and warm. Huh? Come on. Bolly, ready for a good ride, Fever? Balthazar. Morning, young man. How did he get here? Well, he turned up last evening. Um, another misunderstood loner in need of some shelter, right? I must confess, I didn't expect to find anyone else up this early. I was gonna take my horse for a ride. Uncanny. I was just about to do the same thing myself. On him? Most certainly on him. <laughs> he likes you. I like him too, my boy. In fact, I might even go as far as to say that I believe Balthazar and I are soulmates. Soulmates? Meant for each other. Perhaps we can go for a ride together and I'll tell you all about it. You don't even have a saddle for him. Well, he and I, we understand each other. We don't need a saddle. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing nothing wrong. This is my own personal property. It's all right. I just want to talk to you. What about? I heard you in the cafe yesterday talking with those two young boys. I didn't do anything. Those boys wanted to buy me lunch and... I, I'm sure they did. And, and, and I want to buy you breakfast. You do? Why? I study folklore, myths, and legends. But I'm primarily interested in the oral tradition. The tall tales told by the common man. Oh, so you don't think I really cured the king of... Bologna? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just care about the story. Well, um, I've got lots of those. Great. Of uh, course, um, with all these bottles of my medicine left to sell here, I really haven't the time to tell them to you. Uh, such fascinating tales, too. Uh, so evocative and so rich. How much? Had I had never seen a giraffe's heart before. But it was just around the same time that I had become engaged to uh, the queen of Macedonia. What was she like? It was a marvelous girl, a fine girl. Uh, she did have hair on 90% of her body. Very warm. I just met Molly's fiance, Gate. He seems like a very he nice... He ain't her fiance. Uh, whatever you say. 
You know, Gabe, that's not my understanding. Now, according to Julia, Molly says... Julia don't know what she's saying. Just because some yes. guy talks fancy yes. and wears a vest under a suit don't make him fit to be a husband. Oh, come on, Gabe. Molly's got more sense than that, and you know it. Maybe so, but that Greg could talk the sense out of anybody. After Molly went to bed last night, he kept me up till 2 in the morning telling me all about these ridiculous stories he heard from all these crotchety old liars all around the country. We hardly even got through a game of crib. He stayed up till 2 in the morning playing crib with you? Well, yeah, not that he's much of a crib player. <laughs> well, what of it? Well, it's just that there aren't many of us willing to do that, Gabe. The man can't be all bad. <laughs> Uh -huh. oh. There you are, you horse thief. Beg your pardon? Don't think you can weasel out of this. I got witnesses. I truly don't understand. Ugo, not unless you're speaking about that worthless old creature who was following me all around this morn. Worthless? Worthless? I spent over a hundred dollars on that animal. <laughs> That's it. You're going to jail. Now, hold, hold on, on a moment. Let's be reasonable about this. Albert, what are you doing? This... this vagrant stole Balthazar. Or maybe he just relieved you of him. Huh? Oh, you've always hated that horse anyway. You know he's not worth a dime. Why don't you just do yourself a favor and let the poor guy have him? You want me to give the horse away? for free? Well, if he has to go to jail, then I guess he has to go. Good thing for me that he accepted the offer I made him for the last few bottles of that stuff he ever made. Last bottles? Oh, the last bottles? Oh, no, no, those bottles are mine. I already said, Jake, I would top any offer you made. It's too late. What are you two talking about? Well, I guess I'm... I'm gonna have to break my promise to the professor here and let you know just exactly who you're dealing with here, Albert. Uh, don't do it, Jake. I know, I know. Albert, this here is Professor Claudius T. Weinsinger, inventor and sole distributor of Weinsinger's famous lightning penetration oil and tune-up tonic. Ah, uh, promise is a promise, Jake. We don't want the whole world knowing about Professor Weinsinger's famous... Uh... Lightning, penetration oil, and tune-up tonic. There, you said it again. I don't know where this is leading, but the only person I trust less to tell me the truth than you is you. Are you calling me a liar, Albert Ricky? Yes, I am. And before you go berserk on me, you might as well save your breath. I don't believe this story about anything this old vagrant has to sell is worth two cents. Oh, it's worth a great deal more than two cents, I can assure you. That's why I've doubled the best offer the professor's received from either of these two gentlemen. You have? How much you paying for this stuff? Two. Three dollars a bottle. For snake oil? Hardly. Are you familiar with the Harvard University Journal for Modern Medical Breakthroughs? I can't say that I am. That's too bad. Because <laughs> if you were, then you'd know that the experiments done with the professor's penetration oil have led to an increase in brain size in rats. Ah, you've done it. You've let the rat out of the bag. Why is that good? Scientists start with rats, Mr. Ricky, as you know. But soon... You think? Don't take my word for it. Ask Harvard. And when they hear that I have the professor's formula... I told you, I didn't want anyone to find out about this. I want to retire in peace, not to be surrounded by people who want to hound me and make their brains grow. Return my tonic at once. I promise, I won't tell the scientists. I'll just use it on myself. I don't trust you to keep your end of the bargain, young man. The deal is off. What will you do with the uh, bottles when you get them back? Uh, I mean, are they still for sale? All I'm interested in is a quiet retirement with a likable companion. And if I can ride that companion, well, so much the better. <laughs> Three dollars a bottle. Mm -hmm. Why don't you and I go somewhere nice and quiet and talk a little business? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
And all the best to you, Kate. <laughs> and to the lovely couple. Like I said, Crocus didn't get too many visitors. It wasn't a place with obvious attractions. Jake told me that it took a long time before he could call it home. But when I look back, I realize that for the people who found themselves at a crossroads in their lives and ended up in Crocus, people like Jake and Greg Oakes and even the professor, it seemed that whatever they needed most could be found right there. Are you familiar with the Harvard University Journal of Medical Breakthroughs? No? Well, they start with rats, but the next thing you know... Five dollars a bottle, you say? Yeah. <laughs>